Hi there, welcome to Admissions Plus. My name is Anthony and I'm the Product Director Applica. And I'll be taking you through the Year 7 process with Admissions Plus. So what you're looking at here is the welcome page that parents will see when they log in to complete the process with their new school. But before we go any further, let's actually look at the overall process. And here's the overall process. So after the parents have applied through the local authority, uh, schools will then get a list as an Excel or as an ATF file. This is admissions transfer file. Now after this, schools will usually go ahead and import the borough admissions transfer file or the Excel into uh, SIMS and go ahead and at the same time they would also send paper collection forms to parents and this will collect more up-to-date information from the parents and additional information and somebody at the school would manually key in all this information one by one into the database. Now with Admissions Plus, these bottom steps are now a thing of the past. Instead, once the school receives a local authority Excel file or ATF with their offers, they will import this information into Admissions Plus. They will then send a welcome email to all the parents. The parents will log in and complete the form online. And once they're finished, will be able to automatically export and import all of the information, including the core data, into the database. Now the benefit is that you'll have the most recent data for the children and you'll also be able to add additional information that previously had to be collected by hand. So let's go ahead and look at the journey for the tutor. So what we're looking at is our home page for our year seven process and as you can see we'll be able to track the number of registered students, how many of those profiles are completed and also we have a lovely graph that will show us the breakdown and the stage that each profile has reached in completing this form that we are asking for. Now if I scroll down we'll also see that you're able to search for candidates and you can actually go ahead and open their profile. So let's go ahead and cover how you can import your parents and children so that they can actually go ahead and complete the process. So first of all we need to navigate to the import area and hit import. Now once we've done this we can go ahead and click start and import and over here we'll be able to choose whether we have received a CSV or whether we've received an ATF or admissions transfer file. Once we've selected our route we'll then be able to go ahead and simply attach the file that we've received. Okay so once you've attached the file you'll be able to see the information that's coming across into the system and you can see information for the child and also for the parent and we can go ahead and go next and we get a preview window that will show us the information that we're about to import. Once the import is completed we'll be able to go ahead and view a list of all the imported parents uh, with together with their children and as you can see over here we have a list of the parents and we're actually able to go ahead and immediately give them access to their profile by selecting all and sending a welcome email. Now you'll be provided with a template welcome email and you can go ahead and actually customize it further but once parents receive this message they're able to log on and actually continue the process. So we're going to actually log on as one of these parents. So we've just received our welcome email. We've clicked on the link that's brought us to this welcome page. And now we're just about to log in. So as soon as we log in, we can see that there's a welcome message from the school and a picture from the head or head of year. And on the left hand side, we'll already see a pre-populated profile of our child. And all we need to go ahead is complete and add any missing information or update existing information. Now, as you can see, if we did have twins, both of them would be actually added onto the same profile so we can handle both of them at the same time. Now, for this example, let's go ahead and view Chris Aaron's profile. Now, as you can see, the profile form is broken up into a number of steps going across the top and each step has already been customized and aligned and optimized for data integration with your MIS system. So as you can see, step one deals with the child's basic details and you can even ask for a photograph which can then be transferred to your MIS system later. Uh, now, as you can see over here, this information is already pre-populated because it was imported with the borough list, but parents can go ahead and update this. Now further down, parents are also able to complete the address by actually going ahead and looking through a postcode lookup. 
this will improve the reliability and accuracy of all the addresses as all of the other fields will be automatically populated for them. This section beneath is where the parents will tell you about the child's ethnicity, uh, first language, home language, religion, nationality, and any of these other key information that we have over here. As you can see, you can make certain questions required, and so parents will be guided to make sure that they complete the required questions before they continue. Okay, now that we've completed all the questions on this step, we can go ahead to step two. Now, step two is where we would be completing information about the contacts for this child. Now, the parent that has already been created with this profile would already be on here and they'll be tagged as a parental account holder. And let's have a look at the questions that we ask for contacts. So you've got the priority, the relationship, the name of the contact. But as well as that, we also uh, can ask the parent if they have legal responsibility, whether or not they should receive school reports and school correspondence, and even if there's a care or court order associated with this contact as well. Now, if we go further down, you'll be able to see that parents can say if they live with a child or if they live at a separate address. And when this is imported later, uh, if they live at the same address, they'll be designated with the house icon next to them. Now, further down, you can also see that we can collect phone numbers and parents can even be guided to make sure that they give at least one type of number, for example, the mobile phone number. As you can see in this example, we have actually gone ahead and added a second contact and indeed you are able to make it a requirement for parents to add at least two contacts before they continue. Now step three is usually where you'd collect information about the child's background and this is really helpful because it allows you to anticipate the needs of every individual child and later on on, this, on the teacher profile you'll be able to actually start to analyse the responses. So this question here asks if the child has been in care. Uh, there's a question here about if they have any special educational needs and if they do say that they have one, they're able to go ahead and specify which needs. You're also able to ask for document upload questions. So in this example here, we put a doctor's note and parents are able to actually upload and attach this information. Now, later on, when we perform the integration, documents are actually also included in that integration and they will actually also come through. Further down, you can see we've got questions on medical conditions, dietary needs, disabilities, and a section for parents to leave any additional information. You can also ask parents to give the details of the child's GP. Now, one thing to mention is that you also can add user-defined fields to this data collection form. So if there's any user-defined fields that are relevant to this part of the process, they can be inserted into the form and these will also be included in the data integration when we transfer the information. Now, step four is great because it allows you to collect consent for this child and also even allows you to actually get parents to agree with to policies ahead of time when they're submitting this profile. So as you can see, we've added an admissions policy. Other policies that are popular are the homeschool agreement, uh, uniform. And so everybody who has completed a profile will have had to agree to the policies. Now, finally, step five is where the parents would go ahead and confirm the school history of the child if you would like that to happen. Um, any information that was already on the local authority list for the school history will be added onto here, but the parents can go on and add some more information. And further down, there's a section where you can even collect a reference record for the child. And so if you'd like to do this, you can leave this section active and you can even decide when the reference record can be triggered. Uh, some schools will allow this record to be sent automatically once parents submit this profile and some others will send it themselves a bit later on. But once it's triggered, the referee would receive an email and they'd actually be able to answer the questions for this child online and send it back to you immediately. So now that's it, we've gone ahead, we've submitted the initial form for Chris and now we can go ahead and complete this for our second child if we had more than one. So let's go ahead and look at how this feels from the tutor side. Now, as parents are going through and actually submitting those forms, you'll be able to actually see that we can track the activity as it happens live on the Admissions Plus platform. You are also able to go ahead and immediately search for profiles by simply clicking here and searching 
for a profile like this. And as soon as you do that, it will open up onto a new page. And this is how the profile looks from a tutor side. So as you can see, the core information about the child is presented over here. And if you've asked for photographs, those will be attached over here. Now, as we go down, you'll be able to see that you can make a number of key actions. So you can add students to groups. You can also go ahead and email the parent directly from here. And you can even set up email templates in advance that you go ahead and use to save time. And these can even include name tokens so that when you send them, you don't have to personalize them for each person. So you can save time whenever you're doing that as well. Now, any communications you do send through the system will be logged in the communication log. So you can always come back and see the content of any message that was sent to parents and actually do the follow up from here. There's a section where you can actually go ahead and leave notes and further down, we're able to go ahead and actually see the information that the parent has submitted for this child for each step. If there's anything we ever need to support with or change anything that's underlined with these green lines or these blue lines, you can actually go ahead and update immediately through the system. Now, another really useful area that that schools often use is the activities area. This will give you a history of all the activities on this particular application profile, but also you're able to do other things. So you're also able to actually log activity. So if you have a conversation, if you speak with a parent, um, for example, over the phone, or if it's an email or text, you're actually able to go ahead and log these onto the profile. And you're also even able to create tasks for members of staff and actually send an email to them so that they can be notified if they need to do something relating to this uh, student's profile. So now let's go back to our dashboard and we'll be able to actually see how we can track all of the profiles in one go. So if I scroll down to this first table, you'll see that we're actually able to get a breakdown of the different statuses. So we can see the profiles that are on the incomplete status, uh, awaiting reference if we have the reference collection on, and how many of them have actually gone through to be completed. If we wanted to, we can actually go into the incomplete profiles like this, and we're actually able to go ahead, look at the list of those that are still pending, and if the deadline was looming, we can actually go ahead and select all and we could send an email and draw from our templates and click incomplete. And once we add this in, we're able to very easily communicate with the parents, keep them up to date with the process and make sure that they're well informed. And that will give the parents a lot of confidence to make sure that they are doing everything they need to do at the right time. And for the school, it's saving a lot of time and it's also allowing the school to provide the parents with a good experience. Now, if we go back there and we deselect here, another really useful and helpful area is you can actually start to engage with some of the responses that parents have given for each child. Now, if we go to the application form responses, we're actually able to start to filter and anticipate the needs of the children. For example, if we wanted to find out um, how many of the children that have submitted um, a profile have an SEN, we can actually go ahead and search for this and we'll be able to immediately get a list of all the children that have an SEN. And so maybe the next step will be to perhaps put these children in a group or start to plan around their needs. We could also do this for any other questions that are on the application form itself. So for example, if we have questions relating to their extracurricular activities or interests, we could then go ahead and start to really plan around the students and make sure that when they arrive at the school, we're able to provide them with their best start possible. Now, this is a really good example of how we can use our grouping area. So as you can see, we've put some for art lessons, SEN support and music lessons. So we've centered these around uh, extracurricular and support. And so, for example, if you tagged uh, some profiles in the SEN support, then later what you can do, if you click into this, you'll be able to see a list of the candidates immediately. And you can also then immediately communicate with the parents and start to do other things to support these students. Now, one of the other key areas that you'll need is the meetings area. Now, this area will allow you to create and organize meetings with parents and actually 
uh, organize the confirmation of those meetings through the platform. So as you can see, you can have these meetings either online or face to face or in person, depending on what is possible. So first of all, let's go into this little area over here and you can see that we've actually already added Chris Aaron into this uh, invitation. So we'll actually go ahead and add the second child. So we'll actually go ahead and add the second child. So if we do that, we'll be able to see how parents can then respond. So as soon as we add the child over onto here, we're able to then go ahead and send an invitation uh, to the parents. So if we click and we send the invitation, as soon as we do that, the parent will receive an email and they'll be able to log on to their profile. And once they do, they'll be able to see the meeting details over here. And as this is an online meeting, it's got the online link that the school has inserted here. And as a parent, we're able to accept and even select the date and time if there are a number of slots available. And then we can go ahead and confirm. And once we've confirmed, the school will be notified and we'll also receive a copy of the information uh, in our email. Now, when the meeting day comes around, it will be very easy for us to actually open the student profile. And we even have an interview section here where we can actually go ahead and keep any meeting notes that we want to that will be relevant for this meeting. Now, on the parent profile, you can also advertise or make available other types of events that do not require an individual invitation. So if you have an open event that's open to everybody, you can actually showcase this on the parent profile and parents will also be able to very easily register from their profile. So there we have it. We've gone through the process for year seven and you can see how easy it is for parents to be welcomed onto the system, how they can log in, complete the form and how parents can support them every step of the way. And as well as that, how the school can actually start to understand the needs of the child, even as the parents are submitting those forms at the beginning. So now the only thing that's left to do is simply move the information from Admissions Plus into your MIS system.